So the title of the second video that I'm doing today is There Is No Quick Fix. So, you know, after the first video, last video of telling you about my story um, and, and all the kind of stuff that I went through, you know, if I'm thinking of the first thing that I could tell, you, you know, myself of 10 years ago to have to not go through that, it will be the stuff that I have here. Um, which is, yeah, that there is no quick fix because like I was saying, and if you watch the first video I put up, I was looking for that kind of stuff for 10 years and, um, you know, for all the, the injuries and things that I was getting from, from playing too much sport, not looking after my body. And yeah, th if you just like l listen to the stuff I'm going to go through, you know, watch it back, take notes, whatever. Uh, I know you may not be able to see this too clearly, but I'll put it in the YouTube notes for you. But yeah, the main four points were you're not a machine, you're an adaptable organism, you adapt to your environment and you choose the environment. So these four points are going to be massive for you if you're basically looking to get control of your body again, you know, you're, you're looking for quick fixes all the time, you know, you want to move better, you want to feel better. And um, if you understand these four points, they're going to help you massively. So, so that's why I'm going to do it. <laughs> and yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to time myself here, keep a little bit uh, quicker, hopefully just around the, the kind of 15 minute mark. Um, so, okay. First off, you're not a machine. So why am I saying that? Because the common approach is that you know, you go into somebody and straight away they look for the issue or look for what's wrong with you. And, you know, we call this the diagnosis. So um, you go into somebody, they see what's wrong with you and then they find the diagnosis and then straight away they're like, this is the diagnosis. Now this is going to be what's going to fix you. So, you know, we're looking at it like an approach of like a computer is, is what I sometimes tell people. Like, like if a computer had a bug and now you're just going to go in and fix the bug and now everything is great. Like it, do, it just doesn't, just doesn't work like that. So. That's the first thing I wanted to get you to realize is that if somebody's treating you like that, there should be alarm bells going off straight away. Like if, if I even hear kind of approaches like that nowadays, I know that they don't know what they're talking about, if that makes sense. Like I don't care if they have 10 doctors or they've no degrees at all. Like it's, it's around the approach towards the human body. So if somebody was saying things like that, you know, for example, stuff like if a sore back because you've weak glutes or those kind of things, um, you know, that I have all my issues because one leg's longer than the other and all these type of things that I was told, I understand now that, that they don't really know what they're talking about. So that's the first thing around the common approach is if somebody's just treating you like, okay, this is what's wrong with you, that's what's going to fix you, like it's black and white, it's not the case. So yeah, moving on, like we're a, a human organism is what we are. So you know, we're not going to get technical or anything, but what, what that just means is that we're, we're always changing, we're always evolving, like we're not in a fixed state is what that means. So we're not in a fixed state like objects, like, like computers, like I was mentioning. So. Um, and and that, that's pretty clear, like even from, from you as a baby, did you stay as a baby? No, you know, you're growing into teenage or adult and, and you know, all these different things are happening and changing. So that's just what the first point means. You know, we're not, we're not in these fixed states, like you're, you're not broken, you know, because again, we're, we can't be broken, we're not machine, you know what I mean? So this is just, we need to get out of that type of thinking, like we're broken, we need a fix and all these things that we're told is just getting into totally the wrong mindset and approach and it doesn't even make sense in terms of, of the human body. So. The last point on that then is to understand that one stimulus never will create long-term change. And this is very important to understand. And we, we understand it in different areas of our life, but through what we call domain dependence, we understand it over here, but we somehow can't link it and bring it into other parts of our life. So if I told you, for example, um, you know, if you wanted to go to the gym and get bigger biceps, you would understand that you can't just go in and do one session, the best bicep session ever, and now you're going to have big biceps for the rest of your life. You know, we, we understand that's, that's ridiculous. Like, we know that's not going to happen. You need to go in consistently over the years, you know, to, to work on it. We need to stress our body to make it adapt in the way we want. So we understand that, but then when we're thinking about moving better, feeling better, getting out of injuries, you know, we just think we can go to chiropractor and get, and get one, one manipulation and now we're, we're fixed for life. So you can see the contradiction there. It's just, we should be thinking more like the gym example, like, you know, we're not going to go in and do one bicep session and then now we're, you know, we're going to be strong forever. It just doesn't work that way. So it's the same with the examples of going for these quick fixes. Like I said, it doesn't actually make sense. And um, like one stimulus, no matter what it is, even if it's the best session ever in the world by the best person, I don't care. Like one, one session isn't going to change that long term. Because like I said, we're organisms, we're adapting into the future. So it's more and what you're doing consistently. So, so that's basically that one. I'll move on from that one. The second one then, yeah, you're not a machine, so what are we like I'm already touching on? You're an adaptable organism. So I'll talk briefly about this, just to show you how adaptable we are. I could talk on each one of those points for, for an hour each. 
I'm going to try and go through it quickly. So the first point, yeah, like why are we top of the food chain? You know, we're, we're not the biggest, we're not the strongest, and um, we're top of the food chain because we're the most adaptable. So, you know, all the, all the other species play to their strengths, and, um, you know, like the tigers, you know, more powerful and stronger, that's what they play to. Our strength, like our superpower, as I'm saying here, it's our adaptability. Like that, that's why we're here. If you think of human evolution, like we've come all the way from, from swinging out of trees to um, like agricultural evolution, industrial evolution, you know, come through the information age and technology and all the stuff we're doing now, you know, up to going to be one, fl flying to Mars if, if Elon Musk has everything going his way. So the change that we've gone through is astronomical, it's massive. And, and, and that's what humans do. Like that is our superpower, is our adaptability and our ability to change, which is when you understand this, again, going back to the you're broken, you can never change this type of stuff. Completely not true. So just gonna give you two examples here, rather than harping on about it, um, because we're so adaptable in our biology, so our body, and we're so adaptable in our neurology, which is our brain. So our brain and body are so, so, so adaptable. I'll just give you an example of each and we'll move on. Um, so for the body, so there's a, a Moccan tribe, um, I think it's off the coast of Thailand, so it's just a tribe that lives near the water and even kind of in the water at times, like they're always around the water, and because that's the environment that the kids have been in, you know, for, for thousands and thousands of years, their eyes have actually adapted over time to be able to see underwater to the level that dolphins can. So, um, so yeah, their eyes have adapted to be able to see underwater to the level that dolphins can. And like you can Google this stuff, look it up. Um, and that just shows how adaptable the human body can be. Like they're humans, they're going home safely the same as you and me. They have the same biology, they have the same body and brain as we do. So, you know, they're not freaks or anything like that. Um, again, going back to like one stimulus whenever we create long-term change. If, if you just got one, if, if you got one of your kids now and just, you know, let them play in the water for a day, do they always adapt to, to see to level the dolphins? No, like one stimulus doesn't create that change. If your kid is in water and there's generations and going on of your kids in water and DNA and things are changing and they're in it all the time, then yes, things are going to change. But it just shows our capability for change is what, what I want you to understand there. So like that's that's a great example I bring up about the adaptability of the human body. That's, that's pretty amazing. Um, the one around the brain. <clears throat> so I actually shared some of this during the week on Instagram and you, you might have seen it, but I'll just talk a small bit from, from a scientist does from a, a book called The Brain That Changes Itself by Norman Dodge. And like just even if you just listen to the, the stats that I'm going to go through now, it's pretty mind blowing around how amazing the brain is. We have around 100 billion neurons in your brain and even the cortex part. So like the cortex or prefrontal cortex, kind of like the CEO of your brain that has around 30 billion neurons as well. And those 30 billion neurons just on for the cortex can link up with each other in 1 million billion different ways. And when we say linking up, that's like neural connection. So changes in what we're thinking, our behavior, like all types of change is, is what it means basically. So <laughs> and then they're going on to say, like they're, they're obviously mind blown by this kind of stuff. But if, if we're to try and map out the amount of neural, neural circuits in, in the brain, it's incomprehensible, like it's more, there's more possible neural circuits in the brain than there are particles in the universe. I don't, I don't know what else I can tell you to, you know, to believe the stuff that I'm saying that like the human, human brain is just amazing. That's why they're saying, if I could quote them, um, you're saying these are incom incomprehensible numbers are the reason why the human brain is the most known complex object in the universe. Like it's, they're basically telling you it's, it's the most powerful and complex object in the universe, sit between your ears here. You know what I mean? So we just, like I had no idea about this kind of stuff. Like you don't, if, if you're not kind of looking into it. So, you know, as I say a lot of the time, we're kind of looking in the mirror, we, we see a Fiat when we're actually all Ferraris, like the, the potential for change that we have in our brain and our bodies. It's unbelievable is, is what it is. So that's that, and that's the two examples. We'll move on from that. And yeah, the, our capacity for change is unbelievable. You know, it's a fact, it's proven throughout time. Like I'm, I'm giving you facts here, you know, you can go look these up talk about that for, for hours this is why i say it all the time on instagram you're so adaptable so adaptable and um, but yeah maybe you know you, you want one example sort of me just going on about it so yeah we know we're on the machine we know how adaptable we are from what i'm telling you so you know what do we do then so the way the human body works is that you adapt to your environment okay just just think of the mock and drive there like i said they didn't just throw the kids in the water and the next week you know their eyes had changed to the level of dolphins it was the environment that they had so 
what have I put down here? This is what humans do. This is what we're designed for. Yeah, so th this is pretty much what the human body and brain is designed for. Is It's designed to adapt to the environment that we're in so that we can survive and, re and reproduce. So, so this is what all species are designed for. So, um, like just the example I had here actually, where was it? Um, yeah, of cockroaches. Like, it's just to ingrain in your head that, you know, it's the most adaptable that survives. It's not the biggest, it's not the strongest. And the, the example that stuck with me was from my favorite fighter, George St. Pierre, GSP, so the greatest fighter of all time. And again, he wasn't the strongest, fastest. He was the most adaptable. He'd bring the fight to where he wanted it to go or he'd be able to adapt to what was happening. And he'd, and he'd always um, win, win through that, that strategy. So he, he brought up cockroaches and dinosaurs. You know, we think dinosaurs are so powerful, all this type of stuff. Dinosaurs were around, around like 63 million years ago and they were on Earth for around 170 million years and they're obviously not here anymore. Cockroaches are still here, but cockroaches were also here 300 million years ago. Cockroaches are some of the most adaptable species in the world as well. Like you can chop a cockroach's head off, it still lives for a week. Um, you know, it can survive underwater for 40 minutes, all these types of mad things. And again, it's just because cockroach has a similar superpower to us in that, in that it's so adaptable. It also actually likes beer as well, apparently. Um, so yeah. That's just to show, like, you know, it's, it's about the most adaptable species that will survive. That's what humans are. And look, these are kind of more evolutionary examples just to make sense of it. But to bring it into modern times and how we adapt to our environment, that will make sense to you. You need to be thinking more about the examples of, of when we go to the gym. So, you know, when, when we, let's say you want to get stronger, we understand that you need to go to the gym consistently to get this. Like, if you want a heavy squat, if you want to be bench, deadlift, you know, if you want to set looking better, putting on more muscle, we all understand that this takes time, you know, it's not going to happen in one session, you're not going to go to the, the gym and have the best session ever and now you're a tank for life, like, we understand it doesn't work like that. We need to bring the same thinking to, to movement and feeling better, um, because that's the same thing like it is, like, for me, before, I used to go and get these quick fixes, think that these one-off stimulus is, is going to change my body, but it's not, just the same way that I can't just go to the gym for one session and get stronger. Like it's not how it works. It's the consistency and it's to try and stress yourself over time to make yourself adapt the way that you want. So that's what I've done with my body. You know, I do joint health routines in the morning. And um, so around five minutes of mobility every day, five or 10 minutes, and um, because it's the environment that matters. It's the environment and what I'm giving my body every day, these one-off things, it's gonna be useless over the, you know, the long term. So that's what it is. The environment is actually the most important thing. And you know this is the kind of stuff. This is the kind of stuff from telling clients, you know, in their first session. It's all around the approach and the mindset of it. I would rather have my clients do the five minutes of daily mobility than the than the exercises that I give them. Okay, like if we're going to choose one over the other, we don't have to. We can choose both, which is why we get changed quicker. If I had to choose one thing, it'd just be the five minutes of daily mobility, and that's going to add up over time. And these are the strategies I use for everything else. If you see me juggling, I'm only juggling five or ten minutes a day, but you're just seeing me after six months, and now you know I'm on, I'm on the four balls. So. It's just the environment that's going to make the change. If I just decided to juggle for two or three hours every three months or something like that, or six months, like the way we go to the chiropractor, like it's, you're not going to get, you're not going to get the same change. So that's the next one. You adapt to, um, to your environment. And the most important one, you know, who chooses the environment? You do. You know what I mean? Like it's, I know we may not realize it, but you choose the environment, just like I chose the, the environment. And this is what's going to create the change. Like for me before, Unfortunately, I chose the environment of not looking after my body, looking for the quick fixes. I went to the chiropractor every six months for, for eight years. What did I do in between those six months? I did nothing. I, I, you know, I was playing sports, hammering my body, like that kind of stuff, not looking after it. So th that's why, you know, for those 10 years, I had those chronic pains and injuries, and now I don't, and I'm moving and feeling so much better, is that before my environment was not looking after my body, looking for the quick fixes. My environment now is five or 10 minutes on my body every day. And obviously I'm doing a lot more stuff besides that on my body. So that's what we need to understand, that it's in our control. And I'll leave you with this example around brushing the teeth, which when somebody told this to me, I've never forgotten it. And, you know, it really brings across how it's down to us. And a big part of it is that our priorities are just so off. So it's down to brushing the teeth. Like if we just compare how you look after your body to how you look after your teeth, you'll find that you're prioritizing your teeth way more than your body. And this is just because this is ingrained in us you know, through society, when it's just something that, that we do, and um, you know, for, from, from our parents. So yeah, brushing the teeth, like let, let's just have a hypothetical example here. Let's say you didn't brush your teeth and you went to the dentist after like six months or a year because 
you're not brushing your teeth. Your teeth have started to, you know, get black, go black. Maybe one or two of them are falling out. If you went to the dentist and then you're like, yeah, you know, whatever, over the last year, this stuff has started happening to me. You know, can you give me the quick fix? Similar to the way we go to the car can you Can you fix me? Can you do something about it? He would be asking you, you know, have you done anything to look after your teeth? And if you're like, no, no, I don't. And he's like, do you brush your teeth? Like, no, don't. He, he would look at you like you're a, like you're an idiot. You know, like what do you think is going to happen? If you're not brushing your teeth. Of course you're going to get plaque on them. Of course you're going to have issues. Like, well, you know, it's your approach that's the problem here. So yes, he might give you the, the quick fix, just like the chiropractor might help you. But what are you doing after that? Like even when we go to the dentist, what do we do when we come home? Do we think, oh, the dentist has fixed my teeth now. I never need to brush my teeth ever again. Like, no, we, we understand, okay, he's helped me out. Now I need to keep brushing them as well. I need to keep being proactive and, and keep my teeth healthy. So we don't even do that with our bodies. Like, for, like I didn't do it. I go to the chiropractor. Um, that's, you know, another topic, that, you know. But what did I do after? I did nothing. So the way I treated my body was pretty much, if I translate that to my teeth, it would be the same as never brushing my teeth, going to the dentist once a, once a year, and then coming out and never brushing them again. Of course, I'm gonna to have to go to that dentist every year, won't I? Like, just like I did with the chiropractor. So, um, that's what you need to think about. If I asked you, what have you done today for your body over the last week, and what have you done for your teeth, the answer is gonna be completely different. You probably brush your teeth twice a day, you know, for the majority of your life. Like, what have you done for your body? So, um, even though we don't know it, our actions are prioritizing our teeth over our bodies, and this is something that you need to realize because this is all within your control. Once I realized this. Straight away, I'm like, I'd rather be moving like a ballerina and be gummy Joe at 60 and have no teeth. You know, that, if I had to choose, that's what I'd choose. I don't want to be crippled and broken and you know, resigned to a chair at, at 50 but have pearly whites. Do, do you know what I mean? These are things that we need to decide for ourselves. Luckily, we don't need to choose. You, know, you can have both of them. But from the way that we're acting now, we're completely prioritizing teeth over our bodies, which I think is ridiculous. Like, you know, what, what I want to see is a world where we're prioritizing our body more than our teeth or just, just as much as our teeth. Even if, even if people just treated their body like their teeth, you wouldn't see half as much cases, you know, like, like mine was. So that's pretty much what I'm saying. We need to be proactive rather than reactive, just like the teeth. I won't go over it again because I'm already talking too long. Um, and yeah, the final one, which is why I'm always saying on my page, make progress or make excuses. All this, like I'm giving you the information here because it's the, ownership and the education is going to make the change for you rather than if I like compare this to me just showing you one exercise it's it's pretty useless you know like over the long term so again make progress or make excuses it's up to you to do something with this information I'm not doing this because because I like to be in front of the camera I don't you know I'm not doing this for, for the crack so it's here to to give you more information to give you better information to understand like I'm saying you're on a machine you're adaptable organism you adapt to the environment and you choose the environment. So actually the way you're moving and feeling, whether you're, you like it or not, it's actually all down to what you have decided in your life so far. So I'm trying to bridge the gap between, like you need the knowledge to know what to actually do or, or, or why the approaches that you're doing are wrong. So if you go over this video again, you should be able to think of who's treating you and you should be able to identify if this is gonna work or not. Like now, if you go into someone and, and they're starting to say these things again, like I'm gonna do a manipulation, dry needling, this and this and that, and then afterwards expect you to do nothing. You should know now that it's impossible to get long-term change. It's just not gonna happen. So yeah, I'll leave it there. I've already kind of, kind of gone over the time anyway, but I'll put all the notes um, in the YouTube description. And yeah, like if you want to talk more about it, just reach out to me on Instagram. And yeah, hope you, you learned something, something from it. And yeah, we'll, we'll leave it there for now until, until next week.